Now, if you're into photography, then you've almost certainly heard of this, the Ricoh GR. Now, this camera range is often credited as being one of the best for street photography and travel photography, mainly due to its small size, great image quality, and ease of use. But did you know that before GR cameras were even a thing, Ricoh was trying to break the status quo with a completely different and very innovative camera system idea? And that system was and still is unlike anything else you've probably ever seen before. I'm talking about this, the Ricoh GXR. What made this camera system just so revolutionary, you might be thinking? Well, this. That's right. This takes the concept of modular camera design to a whole new level because it isn't just the lens that I'm removing here. In this module, there's the sensor, the shutter mechanism, and the imaging processor. And that means that this back system here can be combined with a whole range of different sensor and lens combinations to not only achieve different focal lengths, but also different sensor sizes and types too, and totally different specs in general, transforming this into an entirely different camera. Now, even today, this is a pretty wild concept. And although I think this system has a number of benefits, which we'll obviously talk about in this video, it seems like this was all just a bit too much for consumers because unfortunately, this GXR system didn't survive very long at all. But despite it failing to make ground in the camera market back in 2009, this retro camera system has seen somewhat of a resurgence in 2024. But why? Well, firstly, for its age, this is an incredibly well-designed camera. Size-wise, it's really not that much larger than the GR cameras that we use to today, meaning that it's also fairly lightweight, depending, of course, on which of the modules you slap on the front. And obviously, we'll go through which modules were available in just a moment. The handling of this camera is genuinely god tier. And I'm not just saying that to be dramatic or overhype this camera. It's honestly better designed than a lot of the more modern cameras that are reviewed on this channel. On the top, we have a full-sized hot shoe port, and there's even a little pop-up flash. There are plenty of manual buttons and dials, most of which are well within reach of your thumb, and some of them are even customizable. There's a dedicated mode dial on the top here with all of the shooting modes you would expect, and there are even two dedicated command dials. Though admittedly, this dial on the back here isn't really a dial as such, it's more of a rocker switch, but I'm kind of into it. Now, speaking of rocker switches, there's also one just here, just to the right of where your thumb rests on the back, which will either allow you to zoom in and out if you have one of the zoom lens modules attached, or if you're shooting with one of the prime lenses, it acts as a means of dialing in exposure compensation. And honestly, I absolutely love this thing. It's just so quick and convenient, and it genuinely got me thinking, why did we ever stop using rocker switches? Come on, people, let's make switches rocker again. But of course, without any of the modules attached, this is just a fancy means of showing off your photos to all your friends. So what lens and sensor options did Ricoh make available for this GXR system? In total, Ricoh released just six lens modules for this entire system, and I was incredibly lucky to find a collection for sale on eBay, which included not only the GXR body, but also four out of the six lens modules. Now, this entire lot came with two other bonus items, which we'll talk about in just a minute. All in, with shipping and taxes included, this came to a little under $1,000. Now, that's certainly not cheap, but bear in mind that I'm not just getting four lenses here. I'm essentially buying four entirely different cameras. Plus, you'd almost certainly never need to own all of the modules. I just wanted to get my hands on as many as I could for the purpose of this video. And generally speaking, prices for just the GXR body and one of the cheaper lens modules usually start around $225, whilst bodies paired with one of the more sought-after modules can fetch prices as high as $700. So this camera system really can be tailored to suit most budgets and requirements, which is certainly one of the appealing factors to the system even today. So which modules did I get? Well, luckily I got both of the prime lens options that I wanted, which is this 18.3 mm f2.5 and this 33 mm f2.5, both of which include the same 12 megapixel APS-C sized CMOS chip. Now with the crop applied, these provide an equivalent full frame field of view of 28 mm and 50 mm respectively. Now this 50 mm is also a pretty capable macro lens too, allowing you to focus as close as seven centimeters away from your subject with a 0.5 times magnification, which is pretty nice. Though when you activate macro mode, it does look as if it's a little bit too happy to see you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, boy. I also got two of the zoom options available, starting with the larger one though. This is the 15.7 to 55.7 millimeter F 3.5 to 5.5, which also includes an APS-C size sensor, albeit a little little higher resolution than the previous two at 16 megapixels with a faster imaging processor too. In full frame terms, this provides a 24 to 85 millimeter field of view. And I imagine this was developed to be sort of the workhorse lens as it covers most of the bases. Now, this other zoom module is where things get a little bit weird because this thing is
is a 5.1 to 15.3 millimeter f 2.5 to 4.4 lens. But inside, there's a compact camera sized 1 over 1.7 inch CCD sensor. Now, once you factor in the 4.55 times crop, the images it produces look closer to something like a 24 to 72 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. And I promise I will stop with the ridiculously long numbers very soon. Now, this is the cheapest module of the entire bunch, and it also includes sensor shift stabilization, which is pretty handy. But for me, the most interesting thing about this module is the sensor, because as you may or may not already know, buying older digital cameras with a CCD sensor has become somewhat of a trend recently due to these older chips creating nostalgic, late 90s type looking images. So that means this system allows you to quickly switch between shooting images with a pretty competent 16 megapixel APS-C size sensor and a very reasonable zoom, to capturing images that have a nostalgic CCD feel to them without having to buy an entirely new camera. Switching out the modules on this thing is super easy and really not that fiddly at all. It really doesn't feel that much different to changing out lenses on a regular camera. Though I do find myself having to fight the urge to twist the lens whenever I press the release switch. Also, one of the obvious benefits of these modules being completely sealed is that you never have to worry about dust or dirt getting onto your sensor. So I mentioned that I have four out of the six modules, so which ones am I missing? Well, currently I don't have the 28 to 300 millimeter equivalent super zoom module, which also includes a two over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. And then I'm also missing the GXR mount, which is basically a module that allows you to attach Leica M mount lenses. However, this seems to be the most sought after module of the bunch, and therefore it's usually one of the more expensive ones to buy. Now I can only assume that this is the case because it offers more flexibility in terms of lens choices, because it just operates like a regular camera, but surely that completely defeats the purpose of owning a camera like this. He's right, you know but what do you think? Anyway, I also mentioned that this lot came with a few bonus items. Well, I kind of lied to you a little bit when I said that this bundle only came with four modules because actually it came with a fifth. The fifth one being this, another one of the CCD modules. But wait, because this one is different. This one has had the internal IR cut filter removed and so that means it's able to capture infrared photography like this. Now, I'm not gonna deep dive into how infrared photography works because I've already made an entirely separate video on that topic, which nobody watched, so you can go and check it out up here if you care, please. But in a nutshell, how this works is you take this genius little accessory here and that clips neatly onto the front. And basically this is just a weird lens hood with an IR filter stuck to the front. And this filter is what cuts out most of the visible light waves while still allowing infrared light to pass through onto the sensor. Now, this is also a variable filter, which means you can also adjust the strength for different effects. But that's not all, because if you take this hood thing off entirely and shoot with the module like this, you can now capture full spectrum images which means this module is now capturing all of the visible light and infrared spectrum all at the same time. It really is the little gift that keeps on giving. I should also mention that this GXR can record video, though the specs will obviously vary depending on which module you use. Weirdly though, the video capture option is hidden in the scenes mode for some reason, but none of that really matters anyway, because this camera is from 2009. So as you would expect, none of these modules are gonna produce decent results by 2024 standards. Unless of course you are specifically looking to capture that retro digital feel. Now the final little bonus item that came with this whole bundle is this, which is a clip-on EVF unit, which is easily one of my favorite things about this whole camera system. Sure, it's a little bit dated and it feels very flimsy and every time you want to use it, you have to manually press this button here to activate it because it doesn't include one of those little sensors that switch it over automatically when you put it up to your eye, but it can do this. Cool, right? Right? Well, actually, as it turns out, this is actually really helpful considering the fact that this camera doesn't have a flip out screen. So when you're working in harsh light or you just wanna shoot at a lower angle without busting up those haggard old mid thirties knees of yours, this thing really is your best friend. Now there were also other hot shoe accessories released for this system, including a larger flash unit and two optical viewfinders, both of which had a field of view equivalent to a 28 millimeter lens. And obviously these were intended to be paired with the 28 millimeter unit for that range finder style shooting experience. In terms of image quality, obviously, this is very much a mixed bag given the variety of lenses, sensors, and specs on offer here, but overall, they're all pretty good in their own right. The RAW files were really nice to edit, and although 12 megapixels may not sound like that much by today's standards, trust me, this is more than enough resolution to play around with, particularly if you only ever post online. I'd have to say that the images produced by the 10 megapixel CCD zoom module were the poorest quality results, but then the trade-off, of course, is versatility 
versatility because this module creates a very versatile and jacket pocketable package. The Big Boy Zoom is probably the most powerful option of the bunch, mainly because it was one of the last releases before this GXR was eventually scrapped, and so it benefits from a faster processor and produces higher resolution 16 megapixel images on an APS-C size sensor and has a very versatile zoom range. But the trade-off is that it's absolutely huge, obviously comparatively speaking of course, so with this attached this is now no longer a realistic jacket pocket camera. Now obviously this being an older camera the AF isn't going to be phenomenally fast but the two prime lenses I found were fast enough for most things and if you don't really like the autofocus they do also include snap focus for things like street photography. The best performer of these four is this big boy zoom. This thing is super quiet, super quick to lock onto targets. And then there's the cheap zoom. This thing, well, it sounds like a car being crushed. But I think this all goes to show that this GXR really does offer one of the most unique shooting experiences out there. It's pretty wild that you can maintain the same handling and camera controls whilst being able to completely alter the specs and final results you're able to capture using all of these different modules. It really is a fun way to shoot and this camera can do a lot, but unfortunately the one thing it wasn't able to do was generate enough sales. So in 2013, after just four years, Ricoh quietly pulled the GXR series from shell. Despite its ultimate failure, this radically different camera system is still just as much fun to shoot with today and I completely understand why this has become a cult favourite amongst camera collectors.